refer to maintenance manual MM0970, MT14X series single reduction forward differential carriers on tandem axles. To obtain this publication, visit Literature on Demand at Meritor.com. Contact Meritor's commercial vehicle aftermarket at 888-725-9355. The tools required include Meritor 2728T1 seal installation driver, Meritor 2728T2 sleeve installation driver, Calibrated torque wrench capable of 750 to 850 pound-feet, 1,020 to 1,150 newton meters. Use of a torque multiplier is acceptable. Two and a quarter inch six-point socket. Dial indicator with magnetic base. Pry bar. Standard spanner wrench, size range covering 5.3 inch diameter. For example, the Armstrong Tools 34-310 or J.H. Williams 474A. The required parts include Kit 2920 parts Part number description 2297L9086 Loctite 577 thread sealant A1205X2728 input seal 2214W1271 input adjusting ring It's important to know that this repair requires that photographs be supplied to the Meritor on-track customer call center at 866-668-7221 prior to the start of the repair for warranty consideration. Refer to the photographs in the Confirm the Leak section. For repairs that require the replacement of the front cover according to directions in Meritor's TP1214, order part number 3226M1547 for a non-pump model or part number 3226P1550 for a model with pump. Before performing the leak repair procedure, confirm the leak is coming from between the adjusting ring and cover and not between the seal and yoke. If necessary, clean and inspect the area closely to verify the source of the leak. Many leaks are misdiagnosed. Some leaks, which look like a stain on the front cover surrounding the input yoke area, are simply assembly grease. The new seal assembly parts seen here show the red pre-grease required for the break-in period. A repair is not necessary if there's not an actual wet area below the seal and adjusting ring area. These drive axles show a true seal or adjusting ring leak which looks wet in appearance. This drive axle illustrates what to look for when examining seals for a leak. If the seal leaks between the primary seal lips and the yoke, the red pre-grease previously mentioned will wash out. The presence of the red pre-grease between the primary and secondary seal lips indicates that the leak is not coming from the seal lip to yoke sleeve interface. If a leak exists, look up the vehicle's history to determine if kit 2920 has been previously installed. You can use the VIN chassis number to look it up either in the OEM's warranty system or the Fleet Repair Facilities system. If kit 2920 has been previously installed, remove and replace the carrier cover with a new cover. Install kit 2920 as part of this installation process. Refer to Maintenance Manual MM0970 for complete procedures. If a leak exists, look up the vehicle's history to determine if kit 2920 has been previously installed. If a leak exists and has not previously been repaired with kit 2920, before you begin repairs, look on the door tag or OEM warranty system to determine the vehicle build date. The vehicle build date will determine the correct strategy for repairs. If the vehicle was built prior to November 1, 2012, install kit 2920 using the leak repair procedure in this bulletin. If the vehicle was built after November 1, 2012, check for the following to determine the correct repair. If the red pre-grease is washed out in the area between the primary and secondary lips, remove and replace the seal only. Refer to the seal replacement procedure in this bulletin. If the red pre-grease is not washed out of the area between the primary and secondary lips, install kit 2920 using the leak repair procedure in this bulletin. If you believe a leak exists, but the visual checks are inconclusive, install kit 2920 using the leak repair procedure in this bulletin. 
1. Block the wheels to prevent the vehicle from moving. 2. Install a dial indicator and position the tip on the end of the input shaft. Check and record the end play. 3. Remove the yoke nut and yoke from the input shaft. 4. Clean any debris surrounding the adjusting ring to ensure none enters the axle. 5. Remove the bolt from the lock plate and remove the lock plate from the adjusting ring. 6. Remove the adjusting ring from the cover and discard it. An air hammer with a blunt tip can be used to facilitate removal of the adjusting ring. 7. Use brake cleaner to clean the threads of the new adjusting ring provided in Kit 2920. Ensure the threads are dry before applying the sealant in Step 10. Note, suitable tools for cleaning the cover threads are picks, small wire brushes, cleaning solvents such as brake cleaner, and compressed air. 8. Place a rag in the carrier cover opening to prevent debris from entering the bearing area during the cleaning process. Use a pick or other suitable tool to clean the old sealant from the axle carrier mating threads in the cover. Do not use air tools to clean the threads. After the old sealant is removed, use brake cleaner to thoroughly clean the cover threads and allow the threads to dry. 9. Ensure the threads of the new adjusting ring and the carrier cover are clean and dry. Apply Loctite 577 thread sealant to the entire circumference of the input bearing adjusting ring and the axle carrier cover, making sure to embed the Loctite 577 thread sealant into the threads thoroughly. Loctite 565 thread sealant can be used as a substitute if necessary. 10. Install the adjusting ring into the cover. Tighten the adjusting ring using a target torque of 15 to 20 pound-feet or 20 to 27 newton meters. This range will bottom out the adjusting ring and seat the cup and bearings in the ideal position to obtain correct end play. Do not exceed 20 pound-feet. Rotate the input shaft back and forth to further ensure the bearing is seated. Then back the adjusting ring out two notches. Note: Remember, the yoke does not have to be installed during this step. 11. Check the input shaft end play according to the instructions in Maintenance Manual MM0970. If necessary, loosen or tighten the adjusting ring one notch to adjust the end play to two thousandths to eight thousandths of an inch or five one hundredths to twenty hundredths of a millimeter. To move the bearing cup outboard, place one end of a pry bar under the yoke nut and apply force by hand on the other end to pull the input shaft outward. 12. Clean the threads of the lock plate bolt. Apply Loctite 242 thread locker to the bolt. Install the lock plate and bolt. Tighten the bolt to 25 pound inches or 34 newton meters. 13. Remove the sleeve from the yoke and install a new sleeve. 14. Install the new seal into the adjusting ring using Meritor Seal Driver 2728T1 and a dead blow hammer until it is completely seated. Refer to the seal replacement procedure for complete instructions. When correctly seated, there should be less than 10 thousandths of an inch or 25 hundredths of a millimeter gap between the seal flange and the adjusting ring. Use care to keep the seal lips clean during this step and the rest of the procedure. 15. Apply Loctite 270 or Loctite 277 adhesive sealant in a 12 hundredths of an inch or 3.1 millimeter bead around the inside diameter of the yoke nut. 16. Install the yoke and yoke nut on the input shaft. Refer to the seal replacement procedure for complete instructions. Tighten the yoke nut to 800 plus or minus 45 pound feet or 1,090 plus or minus 60 newton meters. 17. Wait two hours after final assembly before you operate the vehicle. For more information, contact the OnTrack call center at 1-866-ONTRAC-1, 1-866-668-7221.